My Neas, I'm living in the most incredible and unique place you ever can imagine. North of Norway, in Westerwald, close to Lofoten. You're just a pawn in a game for business owner to get easy replaced. What they think. Even if you give a lot of your life and free time, they treat you with disrespect if you show them it's enough. I always wanted to see the midnight sun, but the toxic work condition holded me back in enjoying life on a very long road until I said, stop. I'm taking you with me on a journey in Lofoten for hunting down the best midnight shot you ever can imagine. There's actually more people here than expect, expected and actually a higher price as well. I want to have 150 kroners for stay a night here. Uh, it's a private landowner where you can do as he please and even can make a fee if you don't pay it. So, um, oh, it's actually hard to adapt <laughs> turning around the day and sleep on small space in the van. It's quite hard, but everything is possible. <laughs> See here. <laughs> it's not big, not enough space. We have stuff lying here, charging stuff here. But it's a new day and we are going to new adventures in the road trip of the episode 3. <laughs> This is actually the best thing I bought on my van. It's really important to have a good coffee. And you, as you know, you see it always with all over van guys, van people. So how was your first day of sleep in the tent it's in a hot. lifetime? It's too hot. I mean, uh, night time? Yeah, I it's the first it's, time. <laughs> it's like, a, no, it's not my first time in tent, but like it's, it was freezing in the beginning. And then it was very stuffy, so, but... Anyways, I still managed to pull through, but with five hours of sleep. And then after that, I got waken up by drones and flying around this area. So, <laughs> just have to carry on for the next few days, yeah? <laughs> this is the camp here. We were sleeping from five o'clock in the morning until now it's, I think, uh, yeah, it's nearly one o'clock. <laughs> it's actually late, but we've been awake uh, many hours. Just made a stop at surf camp in Flagstad, beach camp. Yeah, I did not been filming for the last several hours and there's a big uh, good reason for it. It was a big issue in Lofoten to find a toilet actually, as the public toilets are closed and we discover the first closed toilet in the beginning of the ET in Lofoten and now we are three to four hours inside Lofoten. Toilet at Ramberg Beach is also closed. Don't know what's wrong, but it's not open for the public. And if you go on to ask about the toilet, they have no space or no places where you can have a public toilet so if you travel to Lofoten you might have your own toilet it's the best solution or you go to the gas stations but as the, as where we had been there was no gas station nearby it was only like 40 minutes driving in each direction so it's a big issue but we went to Flagstad beach camp where I am now it's really nice we had 20 degrees today the wind had been warmer earlier now it's a little bit cold and chill and here just buy a coffee or ice and you can use the toilet is no problem so it's really good that we have this beach camp during summertime but it's actually closed in the winter time mm. 
here you have a really nice sandy beach and if you have warm wind and temperatures about 18, 15, 20 degrees it's really nice to take a swimming break but you have to be aware about the water is really cold and freezing in Norway Here we are at Flagstad Beach, it's one of the popular surfing destinations in Lofoten beside Unster. Here are not always good surf conditions but it's really good for beginners if the waves are really big at Unstad. So you can consider this place here to go surfing if you're not comfortable with big waves. The road is really shaking, the bridge is over Fredwang, it's going up and down. I have just arrived at the parking lot to Rieten, the hike in North Norway on Lofoten. I'm actually really surprised they would like to charge me 100 kroners to go on a simple hike, which is normally free ride in Norway. <laughs> so uh, it's really strange. You could also go on the main road, but there are many tourists standing with their camper vans and blocking the places and there's no place to stay to go the alternative route. My battery is constantly dying as always on my GoPro. Since I'm having the GoPro 10, I have some seriously battery issues. Here you see the sign. 100 kroners for this parking place. Yep, but we want to go to hike, so we have no other choice, so we have to do it. <laughs> Nice, beautiful weather today, <laughs> so good. Here you see the sun, it's still bright. And we have uh, half past nine. Is it the right way? <laughs> I think it's the right one. <laughs> we were just confused. We were going there, but it's to a farm. The sign is showing to the right. What do you think? <laughs> Should we go there, original? Let's go both ways. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have to go this way. We don't know where we should go actually. You see, it's kind of a trail here. Really, a lot of high grass. Ah, I see how the trail goes. So, where's the trail coming from? So, the first sign was actually the right path. We just walked 20 minutes from a paid parking place. Here's a little gate, a private road, and the main road is over there. So actually, it was possible to save this 20 minutes <laughs> if there would be any space to park along the road. Looks like we are nearly half now, halfway up, and it's kind of a flat plateau here. We have a really great scenic view to the mountains over there. And where you can see actually a bridge named Kokan. It's over there where you drive to towards Reine and O. And here you have some beautiful landscape as well. Even if it's not 25 degrees, it feels like 25 degrees on this hike. With a slightly breeze of wind cooling down the body. I always have to take out clothes, it's getting always too warm with a backpack. He's from Malaysia and he's with a winter jacket hiking in summer in Norway. <laughs> but I have to say, if you're not living in Norway, you're used to different climate and low temperatures could be cold for you. But it's always a big difference if you are inside the sun and 
if you're in the shade. It's uh, way colder even for me. Uh, now there's a sign and the stair up there. They say there's a cabin, cabin on the top here. And written it's more this way. Actually, I would like to go to the cabin as well, but we will do it on the way back. Harder and harder each meter we are closing into the top. It's probably because of the yesterday hike we did. I try to bring it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Finally, we made it to the top. It's about one hour and 30 minutes. So you see a stunning view here. This is a famous picture spot for everyone. Yeah, I'm standing at a small cliff. People are taking famous pictures all the time. You can see it from a different perspective. How steep it's going down. So you need to be careful. It's not so high, it's like one half meter, two meters up here. And so revealing the nice beach. And we actually had a movie, we played, we did the movie here down on this beach and built a cabin. I don't know if I lived there for 12 months or it was only 9 months and we've been there surfing and living on this beach Two guys from, uh, I don't know if they are from Lofoten or somewhere This is so nice to see the midnight sun in Lofoten from a mountain called Wieten, Reiten <laughs> Here you see, the sun is there That's actually the top, it's some minutes left this is how the sun is looking like. I'm just moving on to the original top. It's over there. To have the best view of the midnight sun. It's maybe it's three minutes left. So it's 12 a.m. Beautiful midnight sun. It's still a little bit wet with stunning colors, but we have to do some other stuff tonight or in this morning. So we are heading back, hiking down. It, we will see. Some people say it takes two hours, but I think it will be less for us. Maybe in one hour we will manage, maybe one half hour. And the best part comes if you hike down. Because when you don't stare into the ground and to your feet always while going up, especially on this hike, you have a stunning view and the scenery of Lofoten with Redwang and Ramberg. About one hour hiking down. Over there is the cabin, which I promised to show you. It might be far away on the GoPro footage, but I will zoom in for you. Everything prepared for the night. Uh, it's actually working really good. The setup what I have inside the van. It's really nice. To see, it's uh, it's four o'clock in the morning, and it's really light, but it's quite good. Here's the van. 
for the night. I will use the fan. To get some fresh air inside and cool down everything. Now I will have some like six hours sleep and will continue to do more. So have a good night and see you.